Nicholas, what do you like about Bodega Bay School? The activities, everything. And what would you like to do when you grow up? Every job in the world. It just seemed so obvious to us, Nicholas had had his future taken away from him. It seemed that that future should be given uh, to someone else. In fact, it would have been a terrible act of, um, of deprivation, it seems to me, to have not given that future to someone else. Italy's special tribute to the family is due to the low number of organ donations in that country. As well as, as those seven people who were helped, there's what's been called the Nicholas Effect. Uh, donations by other people have increased and people signing up with organizations. The tragedy happened as the Greens were touring southern Italy. They were ambushed by highway robbers as Nicholas and his little sister slept in the back seat of the car. Reginald Green decided to outrun his assailants who fired several shots. For a while he was unaware that a bullet had struck his son in the head. Nicholas lapsed into a coma and died in a hospital two days later. He was in perfect health and he had died. So the real Nicholas wasn't in that body anymore. The real Nicholas was, was somewhere else um, in our hearts and our memories. Um, I mean, I still think of Nicholas a hundred times a day in his funny little ways, but um, uh, that body wasn't the essential Nicholas anymore. So we weren't doing anything to harm him and we were doing something that could help others. Before he had looked like a sleeping child, and now it was clear that the, that the machines were breathing for him and forcing air into his lungs and keeping his heart going. And so it, I hated the thought of him being keep, kept alive on those machines after he was dead. There were seven uh, recipients. Um, that surprised us because, you know, we never, we never thought of that. We're amateurs <laughs> in this business, thank goodness. But um, uh, one of them was within two days of death. There was a little boy of 15 years old who was only the same size as Nicholas at seven. There was a girl who had been in a deep coma, repeatedly in, in comas. And then there was a man who uh, got the, uh, one of the corneas and had been going blind at one time, and now can see his children. I learned that my son's heart valves were used. He saved the life of a three and a half year old boy. Two people now have the gift of sight, an 18 year old young man and a 71 year old woman from Ian's corneas. I received a letter that said, Ian has helped countless numbers of people from Maine to California with bone and tissue. About four years ago, I was uh, working overtime Memorial Day weekend. We had a call to a townhouse fire. Somewhere along the way, things went terribly bad and all the heat and heated gases came up the basement stairs into the living room where we were and I sustained second and third degree burns. The wounds were so large that I needed an enormous amount of skin to cover them in a short period of time and I did not have enough good skin of my own in order to cover the wounds. So the skin donations, the tissue donations that I received saved my life. I was offered the opportunity to give donation of his organ and tissue. And I was not realizing about tissue donations at that time. Sean participated the blood drive at high school and I knew he always wanted to help other people. Well, I think it's important that everybody consider 
in their own lifetime before they pass away whether or not they would like to be a donor of any type of tissue. Just about anybody can be a donor of these tissues. There are certain medical criteria that must be met and the age limit is up into the 80s now. And it's done by individuals who understand the value of the gift and maintain respect for the body of the donor throughout and uh, take great care in, in, in honoring that individual who, who made the decision to help someone else. Will I be able to have a viewing for my son? And would he look the same? And they promised that he would, and he absolutely did, and no one knew. The shortage of donors is the number one problem in transplantation today. Uh, the MOTEP effort is uh, a consequence of uh, a recognition that minority population is in greater need than any other ethnic group, and therefore we need to have a focused, targeted program, and this is what MOTAP has been all about. Unfortunately, African American people are disproportionately affected by this whole scourge of, of failing organs, be it kidney, um, be it liver problems, be it um, heart problems. We are really affected by this, and we are the ones who should be giving. So it is critical, therefore, to have family discussion. Uh, not Critical may not be enough. It is mandatory to have family discussion. My heart came from a 25-year-old male who had been declared brain dead, and his family made the decision to give others an opportunity to live. How do you say thank you? She has lost a son, someone she bore for nine months. How do you say thank you? So many times I wish he was still alive so that his kids could know their father. How do you say thank you? Well, that day he came home from school and he brought a paper where he had told me that they explained something about organ donating in school, but he didn't quite understand. He brought me the paper home and he told me that he wanted to know more about it. And I sat him down and I told him that this was something that not only for kids, but it was for all ages. And after I got done, he said, yeah, you know, because I asked him, do you want to do this? And he goes, yeah. I said, well, if you want, put your name here, and I'll sign here, and you can take it back to school, and you'll be registered as a donor. So that was about a month and a half, two months before the accident. At 7.15, they left, and five minutes later, my daughter comes knocking at the door saying somebody had hit my son at the corner. So I ran out there, and he was uh, close to the curb. And when I picked him up, uh, and put, got him in my arms, it was, he opened it, closed his eyes, and then that's when I knew he was gone, you know, and it just, that was it. You know, that makes me feel a lot better to know that there's five kids out there that have something of him that still lives. We found out at that time that his only option to stay alive was to have a heart transplant. Every time the phone rings, you think it's the phone call that you've been waiting for. You have a pager on 24 hours. You're, it's like walking a tightrope every hour, every minute. Kyle was on the heart transplant waiting list for about two months when he passed away. The dynamic of having two children in your family is wonderful, and you don't realize until you lose one that there's a big hole right now. I'd give anything to have him here. received the call, immediately you, you feel the excitement and the relief that this, this could be a match, this could be a donor. So you have all of those emotions. And then when you're packing your, your bags and you're getting ready to go to the hospital, it hits you that there's a family possibly leaving the hospital. 
that just gave you your child's life. So you take a moment and you, you pray for them. You pray for comfort. And as a mother, I hope that eventually the mother of the donor family will meet Hannah and, and, and know that her child and her family has made a wonderful difference.